So the mid-side miking technique consists of two microphones. One microphone, the mid microphone, is pointed straight at the instrument. The other microphone, the side microphone, is pointed 90 degrees to the side and you can bind the two to create a stereo image in a very special way. Uh, the advantage to this technique over other stereo miking techniques is there's always one microphone, the mid-microphone, pointed directly at the instrument. So you always have a full fidelity pickup of that instrument, whether or not you use the side microphone or not. And that's handy when you need to mono up a stereo image. Here, I'll show you how. So the mid-side mic technique was developed by Alan Blumline in the 1930s, but it didn't get taken advantage of until the 1960s. And the advantage to this technique is that you have one microphone pointed at the information you're trying to record, like the drum kit or the piano or the ensemble. And that microphone is always faced in the right direction, so whatever happens, you always have that fidelity and the side microphone is just there to add the stereo information. And he developed it in such a way that would be compatible with mono and stereo, because back then there was no stereo. But he knew that there'd be broadcasts and recordings made in stereo, and they'd have to be played back in mono. And this technique is perfect because if you take the stereo recording and mono it up, it cancels out the side microphone, only leaving you with the mid microphone, which should sound good. So it's always good to pick a good microphone or a microphone you like the sound of as your mid microphone and just augment that with a nice quality side microphone. So we have the mid microphone, which is represented here in a cardioid pattern in blue. And it's pointed towards the drums directly. And the side microphone is in green. And it's the figure eight pattern as I described. Now the positive end of the figure eight microphone is facing to the right, negative lobe facing to the left. The positive polarity will add with the, mo uh, the mid microphone and roughly double in volume. And the negative lobe of the bi-directional microphone will cancel out the common information uh, with the mid microphone. So what you'll end up with is a right leaning cardioid pattern microphone when you sum those two together. To get the other side, the left side, uh, you sum the mid microphone with the phase reversed side microphone. So when you flip the phase, the back of the microphone is positive polarity and the front of the microphone is negative polarity. So everything's the same, it's just now it's facing the other direction. And you see a roughly cardioid pattern facing the left. And a little dingleberry because it's hypercardioid. So, in general sense, that's how it works. You can have different patterns if you like. Uh, the mid microphone could be an omni pattern or it could be a figure of eight pattern. Both of those things will create different results and feel free to experiment and have fun. So uh, let's have Stefan record some drums and see how it sounds. I can solo things and demonstrate what's going on. All right, dipshit, start playing. All right, stop. Stop. So now that we have some great recordings to listen to, we're splitting the signals out on the console here. And this is analogous to any digital console you have in your DAW. One fader will have the mid signal. Uh, another fader will have the side signal pan to the left. And the third fader will have the side signal pan to the right. The right pan fader has the phase flipped. So the side signals have to be exactly the same level in order for this to work right. And the way I do that is by playing back the recording, just the side signal panning the two side channels together and adjusting the level of one of the faders until the sound completely cuts out or the signal is nulled out because they're out of phase, remember, and they'll cancel each other out and be quiet. And when they do get canceled out completely, you'll know that the levels are identical.
Now it's getting canceled out. Get it as close as possible. That's pretty close. And now I'm going to pan it back to the right. So now both channels are exactly the same level. And that's important because if for some reason the stereo signal needs to get monoed, that side microphone will disappear and the mid microphone will be the only thing present. If those, mic if those channels weren't exactly the same level, you'd hear a little bit of bleed of the side microphone and it would affect the signal overall. Wouldn't sound great. Wouldn't sound perfect. Wouldn't be fantastic. It wouldn't, I wouldn't like it. Not me. Maybe some Now that I have the side channels perfectly matched, you might want to make sure that they never get nudged or moved, which makes it hard if you want to change the stereo width. So you might want to consider sending the signal, the side signal to the two side faders via another fader, which then feeds the two perfectly matched side faders. The reason you'd want to do that is if you wanted the stereo width to be wider or narrower with one fader. So we're listening to the mid microphone all by itself, which sounds like a decent mono kit microphone. I'm gonna slowly add the two side channels, the left and right, in phase and out of phase channels, and we'll hear the effect of the stereo field getting wider and wider. I'm doing it crudely with my fingers, so the level match won't be exactly perfect, but you'll get the idea. And uh, if, you, uh, if you're not wearing headphones, this is pretty useless. So there's more of the stereo field you're hearing, and that's the effect of the mid-side matrix. I'll bring back this side microphone a little bit. And that's the mono mic again, the mono mid microphone. You should notice that the stereo image is getting wider and wider. And you're hearing a little bit more three-dimensionality of the room sound. And I'll bring it back down just to show you back what the mono mic is doing again. A couple of notes. Since this takes so much landscape on your console, uh, it's kind of handy to have a box that's designed to decode the mid-side signals for you. And that allows you to not worry about a fader being bumped over the course of a long session and just gives you the peace of mind. We built one for our studio. It makes it really easy to do that. And there's only one knob to turn up the side signal. And everything's matched and everything's right and it's out of the way. There's half a dozen other companies that come up with that came up with a similar sort of thing uh, I'd recommend doing that but don't be afraid to do it on your console if that's all you have or even in your DAW because it's really easy to do that way you can also process the individual signals separately with a compressor or an EQ to create a special effect like compressing the side channel to make things sound more mono as the instrument gets louder or vice versa if you compress the mon uh, mid signal It'll sound more stereo as the instrument gets louder. You can have all sorts of fun. All right, well, hopefully you have less questions now than when we started the video. And uh, you shouldn't be afraid to try and experiment with mid-side miking. It sounds amazing and on lots of instruments. sounds realistic and great, and I think you'll love it, even if you have crappy microphones. Well, uh, have fun.